What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel and to episode 28 of Let's Play 2001 Scape. I'm Twinrova and this is my Iron Man 2001 Scape account, Theoen. In the last episode, we completed the last five quests of 2001 Scape and earned the blue cape, signifying that we have completed every quest in the game. I am standing in the Champions Guild, which was our reward for reaching a certain influence level. And I've mentioned this before, that I don't know if it's strictly required to complete every quest in the game to access the Champions Guild, or if it's only quests that actually provide influence that you need to complete to get into the Champions Guild and get this cape. But whatever the case, um, we we went the we took the long way in completing every single quest before we came to the Champions Guild. Wow, and that is what we did in the last episode. We also had an upgrade. We got a ton of money, I think 2,500 gold coins from the Black Knight's Fortress quest. And I sold my Mithril Battle Axe in Port Serum and bought this sweet Adamantite Battle Axe, which is our first adamant piece of equipment, our first piece of adamant equipment uh, since taking on the older tiers challenge, which I really am still so happy with that challenge. And now um, that we have all quests in the game completed, it's time to focus on a new challenge for this character. And I, you know, I've been thinking about the different goals that we have in place right now, and um, of them, I think getting the best gear in the game seems to be the most compelling to me at this moment. Uh, getting a full kit of adamant gear seems like the best next step for me. So I think in today's episode, what we're going to do is, is uh, we're, we're going to start grinding some money making to improve our armor. And so we actually, uh, as a result of the Knight Sword in the last episode, we had 35 smithing. Wow, we were at 29. We gained six smithing levels from the Knight Sword, which was incredible. I mean, honestly, just unbelievable. Um, we, we now should be able to smith steel bars. And um, I believe level 30 is the requirement for smithing a steel bar. And I recall having conversations with other players um, talking about how one of the fastest ways to make money in this game is by selling steel short swords. Um, and even that once you reach uh, mithril smithing levels, that it might even have diminishing returns like the extra time required to uh, smith a mithril sword might not even be worth the extra money. So steel swords might be a sweet spot for money making. And so my plan today is to try to scout out the best location for, well, first off, I need to test if I can even make steel equipment. Um, can I smith a steel bar? And then do I have the level for a steel uh, short sword already with 35 smithing? I'm not certain. We need to uh, play and test that out. And then if we can smith steel short swords, I need to find a location that's gonna be, you know, somewhat somewhat optimal for um, creating big inventories of steel equipment and selling them. Dang, I was just in Varrock. I should have got rid of these bars. And actually, while we're over here, I'm going to sell some things to the general store. Let's get some things out of our inventory that we don't need any longer. So let's go talk to the shop assistant. We want to, okay, if I remember right, it's either three coal or two coal to make a steel bar. I'm gonna guess that it's probably, I feel like mithril is three coal. So I'm gonna guess that steel requires two coal and that we need ooh, a gold bar we can sell for 120 GP. Excellent, I don't think we can, oh, we could test, we could test with that. Um, they don't want our grapes, but whatever. We'll sell the red dye, we don't need it. Um, they're not gonna take our world leaves, perfect. Okay. Uh, we can cast the runes to get them out of our inventory. The cape. We're going to sell our old cape since we have the blue one now. Okay, do we have an axe and tinderbox? Do we need to get rid of that? No, we already dropped that. We need the pickaxe and the hammer for sure. Oh, we can sell another wood leaf. Okay. Keep those materials. I want the bow and arrow for PvP just in case. Yep, we've got our shield and our axe, all of our equipment. 
yeah, the only really extra thing we have now are runes that are useful for PvP, um, but we could potentially burn out of those to, to get multiples of three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We actually have enough inventory space right now to create three swords with one trip. Could we turn that to four by selling our runes? Yeah, if we cut down on two types of runes, let's see, what spell would we want to cast? Probably rock skin. So earth and, oh, but those are the ones we're about to run out of. Interesting. Yeah, two runes getting rid of would be helpful. We're The thing is, we are going to use ranged for, for PvP across a distance. So we really only want to keep runes for... Um, okay, we can combat if you'd like. Keep increasing my defense level. Really only need runes to buff ourselves, not to offensively cast. So we could think about oh we don't need the cape. We could think about what runes that we'd like to keep. Nothing requires only one rune type, right? So we could we could if we got rid of all four kinds of runes, then we wouldn't have that defensive buff. But we'd have extra space for another three or which could be big so I guess let me um, cast thick skin on myself does that bring us down to one earth rune yeah yeah I might uh, I might stop by the port serum rune shop and just dump these runes convert them into money we can always buy or find more later if we decide to train magic specifically Good magic and evil magic are in the tens. Not the best, but not the worst. Okay. Yeah, and it's not our immediate goal. I have to think about what are we currently trying to do. And it's not um, it's not to PvP. We are trying to avoid that. And it's not to not to train magic. It's to make money so we can upgrade our equipment. We we want to get an adamant helmet. <clears throat> We want to get adamant plate legs. We want to go try to kill a... Welcome to the Magic Emporium. Uh, can I see your wares? Yes. <laughs> nice and simple. We want to kill ice giants so that we can get the Mithril Square Shield. And then we're going to have to save up 40k gold for the adamant plate body. So that's probably about 50k gold that we're trying to make. So yeah, it's definitely gonna be worth it to, let's just sell all of these. It's definitely gonna be worth it to have room for an extra sword, because I don't know how much they're gonna sell for, um, but the more the merrier when it comes to money making. I don't know, imagine, imagine if we need to make 50k gold, roughly, then, if we make, let's say, 1k gold per trip, I think we were doing that with iron swords. You can fit more in your inventory. I'm not exactly sure how much money we're going to make. If we made 1k gold per trip, it would take 50 trips, which sounds like a lot, but also sounds doable. Um, like, I'm not upset about the number of trips that we'd have to make. It is going to be quite the grind, but it's going to be finite. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't sell the one earth rune. There it is. Okay, perfect. And we're starting with 761 gold. And we can sell our equipment. It's not worth that much, but we can sell our equipment along the way. So when we pass by the Barbarian Village, we really need to try talking to Pexa and see how much is an adamant helm going to cost. I'm going to guess it's about 5 or 6k each for the helm and the legs 
maybe like four for the helm and six for the legs or something like that. I'm, I'm guessing that's going to total about 10k for those two items. And then we'll get the shield from a drop and 40k for the plate body. So I'm assuming that we're going to be about 50k gold into it. Whoa, Grimwin, another player. That is awesome. It's cool seeing so many new uh, new names around. Okay, so I'm here at the Remington Mine, and I know that these are irons, and this is a gold, and this is an iron. This is a tin, is that right? I'm trying to check out what's here. Do we have a coal at this mine? That's what I'm wondering. Tin ore. Yeah, I don't think this is coal either. There might not be coal here. Just kind of assumed the clay, yeah. And I think that these are all not cool. I know the middle two are definitely not, so it doesn't make sense for these to be cool. Copper. I bet that's copper as well. Unless this is tin on the other side. Wow, cannot not see to click yeah okay so um, this mine is not gonna cut it it's not gonna work okay so why don't we try the dwarven mines just scary because it's like a terrifying PvP spot let's check our online list out ether Grimwin and myself ether is on there 88 smithing grind which is so cool we're at 35 that's not bad not a bad smithing level okay so I guess the dwarven mine should a hundred percent have iron and coal in fact we might have confirmed that before what is my mining level it is 37 wow so our mining and smithing is now close to each other again it's kind of fun so I'll try to get rid of this stuff. Tin, clay, copper, copper. And we'll go to the Dwarven Mine and we might, it might be a rotation like Dwarven Mine, Falador, Smithy, and Doric's Anvils. That might be the, the path that we take at least until we get um, PVP ambushed randomly, right? Okay, is there anything tin and copper here. Oh, we can smelt a bar. Yep, bar of bronze. Clay, copper, no, we can sell that stuff. We'll go to the general store and sell it. Just kind of getting my inventory prepped. For the long haul of the smithing grind. Scared me for a second. <laughs> Seeing the white knight come in. Getting like a 1 GP. Nothing for clay. We can smith the bronze bar into something and sell it. No need to no need to sell that, I don't think. We've got our pie. Yeah. It might even be better to have a second pie for safety reasons. I guess we'll see what kind of multiple of three that we have. I guess I could count now. I want to go to an anvil. So we'll go to, look how close Doric's anvil is to the furnace. Oh, that's so awesome. And then the mine is going to be over here somewhere. So should be a pretty okay setup, I would say. For our grind. Okay. So we can make a bronze. Uh, does a sword require two bars? No, short sword is one bar, perfect. And then we can make a series of short swords. We will have to continuously make trips to Varrock to sell the swords for a premium if our gold is money. So that is gonna cut into our time. Now what I'm curious too is uh, jewelry making, I think is also a potential money maker. Nothing interesting happens. Does that mean that we don't have the level for it, or does it mean that we don't have a mold? Like, I don't exactly know 
how the jewelry crafting process works or would work. We might, do we want to try that out? You know, we might actually try that out on the way to 50k, but I think since I'm motivated to go to Steel Swords now, why don't we start with that? And then if we're getting burnt out and we need to switch it up, uh, maybe that, maybe we can look into gold smithing, gold jewelry making, what have you, to make some bank in a different way. Yeah, we'll, we'll hold on to this motivation first. Okay, so we need to go to Varrock to sell this stuff. One, two, three, four, five, oh, five, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so that's 15 divided by three is five. That's five short swords, steel short swords that we can make in a trip. Okay. That's cool. And then if we get rid of the bar, so 12, 34, 15, 16, 17, if we got rid of the gold bar, is there anything else that we can get rid of? Uh, we can get rid of the bow and arrow. Just risk it with melee. It's not the worst idea to really optimize this journey. It even leave one extra slot for a second food. Like we could potentially make a pie. Is this a red berry pie? I need to be making meat pies. Oh my gosh, I forgot. We have 20 cooking. I can make a meat pie now. I need two meat pies in my inventory to optimize for healing with this setup. Yeah, I guess we'll drop, we'll, we'll go full on smithing mode. And this is part of the, this is part of the fun in playing an ultimate Iron Man type uh, character, having to juggle your inventory properly. You gotta make these kind of decisions and it's uh, honestly fun. Ooh, we can also see how much money we would make It'll be a little more because the price of something drops as you sell. But let's see, okay? If it's one steel bar per short sword, three slots is gonna turn into a sword. So one, two, three, five, 10, 12. So that's um, one, two, three, four, five, six, six swords. Okay, so how much is a steel short sword going for? Okay, so let's start with um, let's start with bronze. A bronze is 26, so 26, uh, if we were to sell six of them, would be 150 coins, just to get a kind of a comparison. You'd be able to fit more in your inventory though. Um, okay, and then iron sells for 91, so from 156, you'd get to 546, wow. So half a K for selling six iron short swords. That is quite the scale up. Oh, I'm buying them. No, that's awful. Wow, that was so dumb. Okay, we cannot make that mistake. Steel short sword for 325 GP. Okay, so times six, that's going to be almost 2K, and we're going to lose value per sword. So I'm going to guess that that's 1,800 GP roughly f per trip. So if we divide 50K by 18K, we get um, 50,000 divided by 1800, I should say, it's gonna be 28 trips to get 50,000. And we can break it up in the middle with the trip to the helmet shop and the plate leg shop to upgrade our gear. Wow, okay. Okay, we can do this, 28. That's almost half of what I was expecting. Yeah, like that's gonna take some time, but that's gonna be beyond doable. Okay, let's sell the short bow, sell the gold bar, and let's sell our arrows. I wonder if we can sell them actually. I should have sold that right next door to low. That's okay. Look at how small we've made our inventory. 
for this. Want to see my wares? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, we can sell these arrows for more here. And it'll drop to zero, but that's okay. I just want to get rid of them. You can use them more effectively than I can. And we're already at 1K out of our 5K, 50K gold. So just by dumping some stuff off. Yeah, and if we pass by Lumbridge at some point, we can make some meat pies while we're there. I might head into Varrock for the pie dish now. We'll get the second pie dish because that would give us 15, 18 slots. We'll have that extra slot for a pie should we have the time to make it. And that will be an inventory optimized for mining, smithing, short swords. Take the pie dish. With the hope that we can fill that with food. We could just go do it. But I kind of want to get to the Dwarven mine. And there's not people online right now, so... Yeah, I might just risk it and head over to the mine. See what kind of pace we can get. We need to scout out locations for iron and for coal. Imagine running around with 40k gold just like on you, right? Which, again, you can deposit in the bank, and I actually did that at the start of this character's life, but I kind of decided I wanted to go full ultimate and take the gold, my gold, out of the bank. And the thing is, I've never died... Well, okay, I died once in the last episode. Until then, I had not died, and I became quote, quote, ultimate before I ever died. So really, the only difference was I had an extra inventory slot to do things with. So that, that did make it easier, not having to spend a spot on your money. So slight, uh, slight early advantage in having gold in my bank instead of withdrawn. But now I've got the full the full weight of the pain and suffering of an Ultimate Iron Man account um, squarely on Theowin's shoulders <laughs> for him to bear. I think it's going to look funny when we have like pieces of adamant gear. Hmm, what's here? Yeah, what is this? Tin, okay. Like, I, I just don't know what all these things are. It's tin. I think maybe there was coal. Tin. Was there a coal at the mine in Varrock? Let's see what we got here. Coal. Okay. There's iron outside of Varrock. Is this one coal as well? Coal. Okay. Wow. It'd be nice. It sure be nice if one of these were iron. It's funny having to try so many times legitimately to acquire uh, ore now because we're moving up to coal. Coal. Wow. So this is a coal spot for sure. The Southwest Varrock mine would be an iron spot. We could run over to the Remington mine. Coal. Wow. Okay, yeah, let's actually drop the tin. One, two, three, four. Wow, okay, this is awesome. So if we have 18 slots, we want 12 coal and six iron is a trip. Perfect. And we're going to be getting mining and smithing levels, which is going to help us to move up the high score table in both mining and smithing, but also in 
overall. So let's go to rc.vet. Let's see here where we're at on the 2001 scape high scores. No ore available in the rock because I got it already. So that's five, six, seven, eight once I acquired this one. Let's check out Theon. Mining, we are 85th, and smithing, we are 60th on the server right now. That is cool. So smithing, we could get in the top 50. Wow. That would be crazy. Do I have anything else in the top 50? My evil magic is 53rd on the server. So that's pretty close. Wow, crazy to have anything in the top 50. Wow. Yeah, on Twin Rova, we have top 30 right now in wood cutting and fire making. I think we're just off the, the front page now. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so it's gonna take some time to get these uh, coal. But it should get faster and faster as we level our mining skill, which is my absolute favorite skill in the game. I love the mining smithing loop. So fun. Yeah, we can just rotate through the coal here. It's, it is exposed compared to... Um, oh, I got the coal already. It is exposed compared to the dwarven mines, right? But... See how much is that? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What we need two more. Maybe one more. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, one more coal. But the speed, the proximity of all these coal rocks to each other, that is honestly great. So do I go to Remington for iron or do I go to Varrock for iron? That is a question. I'm not sure what's going to be the best. I guess we can try things out and even just mix, mix it up because um, we want to optimize for time if we can, but we also want to optimize for burnout, which might be the same thing, um, but maybe some varying paths could be good. I guess we can just think about how far away this really is. So go to Southeast Varrock Mine, get our iron, go to Lumbridge, smelt our ore, and then go to Varrock to smith and sell. So we've got to end up in Varrock anyway. Or we go to Remington to mine the iron. We go to Falador to smelt, Doric to smith, and Varrock to sell. Because remember the goal here is money. The goal is 50k of money. If we're making 1800 gold per trip, wow. Like, even if that's dramatic, even if that's not entirely true, even 1500 gold per trip, it's only going to take a few trips and we're going to be able to buy something new for our character. Which is awesome. These look impressive. There's James again training. And our payoff is going to be looking sick with uh, more adamant equipment. Region. Okay, I think it's right here for iron. So now we just need to fill the rest of the inventory up with iron. Yeah, on that mining grind, which I'm happy to be back to. I can definitely focus on this. The payoff is going to be sweet. This is also going to be the grind if we ever decide to push for um, adamant smithing.
Lots of fails. Okay, three to go. Only three iron left. Two to go. Sweet. We are on that mining smithing grind once again. We had several episodes like this before, right? Um, at that point, I think we were trying to just make better gear on our own, right? Okay. And that is full. I've had one wasted click. That's okay. All right, let's head to the furnace. Ooh, which furnace? Alcarid or Lumbridge? Which one's faster? I honestly am not sure. I don't know. Let's go to Alcarid. Let's see what happens. The place where Lappy ambushed me for the first time. If we're mining smithing and stuff over here, then we can totally stop to try to make some pies at some point. Oh, and what's also really exciting is that there's there's not going to be... That's assuming this works. I've just collected all of this. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to smith it. But I think I can. I think at level 30, you unlock steel smithing. Um, and so what's really exciting is that we won't have a percent chance of failure anymore for resources. 100% of our ore will go into a successful um, bar that we can use to smelt. So that is excellent. 35 and 37 currently. So our mining is approaching 40, and that would definitely be our first skill to hit 40. It's so crazy not having a... Um, <gasps> Yeah, you retrieve a bar of steel. Let's go. Okay, yeah. Sweet. We can do steel smithing. Yes. It's so crazy not having a bank in Alcarid. Not that we could use it, but... Wow. Okay, and that was really fast to smelt. It takes a long time to mine all of the resources, and then it's pretty quick to smelt. Okay. This is not too bad of a, of a loop. I feel like I could do this maybe 28 times. Maybe after 10 or so, mix it up. Yeah, I think we can do this. And in fact, we're going to do this. We're going to earn the money that we need for the best gear in the game. Bar, I guess, the adamant kite shield and the adamant two-hander. That can be for a future grind. And if we if we actually follow through and go for like adamant smithing on this account, I'll probably try to do like everything else possible first because of the time that that will take. You know, I just, for, for people watching the series, that's gonna be the longest continuous grind, I think, unless we start doing like a 99s or something, which I, I can't imagine except for that our mining and smithing would already be so high for at that point, so it's possible that we get pulled into mining and smithing because, uh, uh, 99 mining and smithing because of that. That would take so long, I guess one thing at a time. But if we do go for that, I'll probably try to hit like every other objective possible first, just to delay that since it'll basically be a ton of episodes just mining and smithing. Which I will enjoy. And I know that there are some of you that will watch all of my hours of mining and smithing. And I really appreciate you being here and being along for the ride. But I imagine that there is a group of people that will uh, drop off as soon as we get to that point. So we'll try to optimize for a little bit for entertainment. Okay, so now we need to go to the anvil and see if we can make a short sword. Hopefully we're not making daggers because we won't make the, the right bank yet. Here's hoping. 
Heck yeah. Okay, here we go. Money making 101 right here. Get your <laughs> smithing level to 30 something and make steel short swords. Epic, okay. Nice. Maybe we even wait a second for like a sword to despawn to get max money from each inventory. I don't know. It's only six items, so maybe that's worth it. I guess let's take a look at it. This is not that crazy of a circuit to complete though. Hello, bold adventurer. Can I interest you in some swords? Yes, please. All right. Oh, that's... Pff, I'm so bonkers. What a silly mistake. <laughs> we can't sell them for the amount that we can buy them for. 195 times 6 is 1100, uh, 1,170 gold. So... We were probably making half that on iron swords. Wow. So 195 times 6, that's 1170. So 50,000 divided by 1170 should be about it's 43 trips. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that, that was a noob mistake. Uh, don't mind me. But okay, we lose four gold coins for the first sale. And that was pretty quick. Let's just see how long it takes each of these to spawn out. Yeah, it's a good amount of time. Wah, wah, wah. Do we really want to wait for that? Probably not. It's feeling too long. <laughs> Let's try two. Down to 188. Okay, so we're at 2k, so we got about a thousand gold, which is not bad. So we're back to, it's not going to be 50 trips. Oh, I bet you with the depreciation as well, it'll be about 50 trips, 49 since we already had a thousand gold. Okay, so we're back to that figure, which still seems doable. It's, it's a lot more than 28, but we can do it. We can make it happen. The next thing is to try to figure out how long each circuit is going to take so I can figure out how many hours it's going to be. So I'm looking at my timer on uh, the recording. I think I was about at the 37 and a half mark, uh, minute mark. I don't know if that correlates to the YouTube video time. It should. I think that's about where I was when I took off. So let's actually do a focused run now and just see what the timing looks like. So we can math out how many hours, roughly, this is going to take. And when we get back, I will try to just sell the swords and see what our profit is. 2177. Okay, because it might not be worth the time of sitting and waiting for the money. There we go, one. Two. 10 more. Looking forward to some mining levels out of this. Hopefully we're getting a lot more XP for mining coal than other ores. Three. So three rounds of all rocks, since there's four coal rocks here. It's another good way to keep mental track of the right number. Okay, four. It's taking several tries per rock too, which makes sense because it's a new it's a new higher leveled resource for us to try to collect. There's six. 
Man, it's going to be really cool someday when we get to Mithril. It's going to feel awesome. Just a different colored metal. Okay, that's not too bad. Oh, we got back before it respawned. Wow. With like just enough time. Nine. Come on. You can do it. You can do a little Theowin. You can get a cold. I believe in you. This is one feisty rock. Does not want to be collected. There we go. Ten. Eleven. And... <gasps> Found a sapphire. Dang, we don't need that. Twelve. Maybe we uh, sell at the general store. Okay, so from 37 and a half to 41 and a half. Eight, nine, 40, 41. So about four minutes to collect the coal. We've got a sapphire. We're going to have to figure out what to do with those, probably sell. So we can spend a tiny amount of time in the general store dumping off this sapphire, which is gonna make us some money, right? The goal's money, so just think of it as some extra, some extra GP for the trip at the expense of some time. I don't know how valuable a sapphire is though, like if that one, if that particular gym is worth picking up. Let's talk to the shop assistant. Can I help you at all? Yes, please. I would like to sell one sapphire for 10 GP. Not a ton, but I guess better than nothing. Better than dropping it. I feel like that time might have been worth it. So 37 and a half to five minutes is gonna be 42 and a half, and we passed that. So it's been five minutes. This is important because if it takes more than 10 minutes, then we won't be able to get 6K in an hour. So we're trying to do GP per hour um, you know, it's looking like this might be like a 4 or 5k gold per hour kind of thing, which would be 10 hours of mining and smithing runs on this path. Which is, a, you know, it's just, it's a long grind, so it's just something to think about. Might be able to try other locations too and see if there's any optimization to be had there. One, two, might be too early for this rock. That's a good problem to have. Three, four, five, Six. Okay. So where are we at for time? Let's. We're two minutes past. So we're at the seven minute mark. Let's take the Lumbridge path because I think being able to swing around on this side to the anvils is going to shave time. I think. 47 and a half will be the 10 minute mark, and that will definitely put us at less than 6,000 gold per hour, which if we did 6,000 gold an hour, 
then that would be 8.3 hours to earn all of the gold that we need. Quite the grind, and we want to hit this furnace. And then so that means it's going to be even less than that if we can't cut it down to 10 minutes per inventory. Yeah, the good thing is the predictable timing on smithing, right? Right, that should be it, yep, nice, nice. We're still not at the 10 minute mark. We're 90 seconds away from the 10 minute mark. My rough, my rough back of the envelope calculation. It should take more than 90 seconds to get there. Then we still have to smith, smelt everything, or yeah, actually smith everything and then sell it. But it's cool because we can then keep track of how many hours-ish of grinding are left, which would be nice. It's so going to take 10 hours. I could do a few more three, four hour episodes of the mining smithing grind. And think about how that plays out over the course of a journey to, let's say, 88 smithing, for instance. All of the mining and smithing that would go into that. I love this blue cape. This is so epic. Like, I feel so accomplished for this, and I'm excited to the thing that's motivating me here with this long grind is the possibility. Oh, let's focus on. Let's focus on this for time. You can do long swords faster, but for, I think, significantly less money. So it's worth the extra time here to optimize your gold. Okay, perfect. We're at, um, we're about to be at 11 minutes. And the time's gonna be a little variable too, right? Because of how fast we can mine coal is really gonna be a distinguishing factor. 2187, 2187. Spam it, 2187. Okay, time, uh, about exactly 11 minutes. 2187 to 3306. 3306 minus 2187 is 1119, 1100 gold. 1119, so 50K, let's say, divided by 1119 is 45 trips. So 45 trips at 11 minutes, so 45 times 11 that many minutes divided by 495 minutes divided by 60 is 8.25 hours. Okay, we have um, we have 3K now, so 47K divided by 1,100 gold-ish per trip is 43 trips remaining. 43 trips times 11 minutes is 473 minutes divided by 60. 7.8 hours, so about eight hours remaining of grinding. And that's just one uh, day in the office, so I say let's get to work. Yeah, I actually can't believe that I'm just uh, roaming around with such minimal food after so much time spent running in fear from PKers, but 
you know, I think we're I think we're safe at the moment. Let's check the online list. Three people. We've got Lothwin and Baron. Interesting. Very cool. Yeah, also, how funny that uh, the run, I think I said, was 11 minutes, right, for one one round trip, and then about 1,100 gold uh, per trip. So, yeah, if you're keeping tabs, maybe you can go faster than me, but if you're trying to understand how much money am I going to make and how fast am I going to make it with this steel short sword method, then, yeah, 1,100 GP per 11 minutes seems to be seems to be the deal. All right, I'm already forgetting. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, right? So I need 12 coal, yeah. So three times around the world. I remember this rock was uh, stubborn last trip. Nice, look at that. It's always fun when you land it on your first swing, and then way less fun when it takes 20 times to mine one ore. Look at that freaking battle axe. That just looks so cool. I'm so excited that we finally have some adamant gear. in our Alder Tears challenge. What's really interesting too is that Alder has, uh, the, the player Alder, has kind of crafted this really interesting like achievement list. Kind of like the task system in uh, modern RuneScape, which is really cool, honestly. And so it's, it's such a cool list that um, we basically have to try doing it. Pexa over there looks like a Beast Fables account, which is funny. But yeah, I might need to break that out and just kind of like start looking at some of the tasks. Oh, sweet, we got the cool. Perfect. Have to open Discord and go back to the link they sent me but it, it, it honestly seems pretty cool it's like a bunch of random stuff and just kind of fun things which is cool so if you're like what what to do what do I do in 2001 scape right like of course there's all the skills there's the quests um, there's dungeons to explore there are monsters to, to fight and kill gear to collect but if you're still looking for something else to do, I think it's really a cool idea that he <laughs> made this entire like achievement diary, basically geared specifically for 2001 Scape. Yeah, so we're definitely gonna check that out. Definitely gonna check that out. All right. We are almost to the 12 coal that we need for this run. On our mining smithing grind to make money for adamant gear. Nice. Currently at 3,300 GP. And a mining level, let's go. Let's freaking go. Okay, we're at mining 38. We're two away from 40. Dang. Is that our highest skill? 38. Yeah, by a long shot. Wow. Makes sense, since it's uh, me. Mining would be my highest skill. Okay, we need to run, 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 run over to the iron mine. And actually, we can dip down in this direction. Need to fill the rest of this inventory up with iron. Do we need to collect a meat so that we can make a meat pie? I don't know. I don't know if it's worth the... Is there iron right here? 
Oh, we see people at the other mine for iron. Interesting. Look at that yellow. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. The guards are yellow now, not even orange. Delareth, pff, green. Dark wizards, pff, green. Too easy. A sort of ancient altar thingy, the dolmen. Quite interesting. Rat, pff, green. Unicorn, pff, green. Okay. These right here are the irons. Let's load up. It's funny how much quicker we can get uh, iron ore than coal at the mining level. It's like we can mine the iron faster than it can actually then the nodes can produce iron, which is a great, great problem to have. Sweet. Okay. Full inventory of iron. We actually need to rush the furnace now. Rush as fast as our character's little legs can rush us. Come on, Thawin, move as if your life depends on it. And the funny thing is that he is moving as if his life depends on it. Yeah, blue cape, adamant battle axe. This is looking pretty sick. It's going to be better with the full adamant kit. I mean, that's just going to feel baller on this account. This is making me want to play Preservation on Ultimate Iron Man. I think that would be so fun. I'm also really liking this... Uh, oh, Furnace. I'm also really liking the longer uh, format of videos. Um, the last one took a while to record, but... I don't know. Having a longer video and posted less... Frequently kind of makes me feel more like I can just, as I have time, uh, record. I don't know. Less pressure is uh, always better. Yeah, I love that we have a 100% success rate on steel bars as opposed to iron bars. That makes this process a lot better mentally. Okay. Do we want, do we have an axe? No, we don't have the stuff to cook. Oh, the range, we can cook on the range. Do we want to make a pie now? No, we don't want to make a pie. We're gonna risk it with the one pie for now. But yeah, I'm liking making um, longer videos so that when I do post something, hopefully you can get stuck into it. I know a lot of you are on your own grind while you're watching. So maybe having a longer video to skill to can be will be better than lots of short ones. I don't know. I'm enjoying it. It's uh, fun so far. The last video, getting all the way to the Cape of... Um, the Cape of Accomplishment, the, the quest cape in one run, going through five quests, that was pretty freaking fun. I enjoyed that a lot. Look at all these steel bars. Money, money, money. Wow, it's crazy how much money that we actually need, though, right? For the adamant plate body. Like, that is a chunk of change. And that is why we're on our grind, because we want 
the money, and we it's it's not going to be given to us. We can't just trade someone for it, so no one can just donate it to us. We're not going to do that. We need to earn every single. It'll be even longer with all these misclicks. Every individual gold coin we need to earn ourself so that when we have that full set of adamant gear we'll know that we earned it the hard way <laughs> that sense of accomplishment will be epic okay There is a group of short swords. Let's go and dump them. 3,300, so I'm expecting around 4,400 GP. That's the hope. If my mathing was correct earlier, because it was incorrect at first. We were over optimistic. Yes, you certainly can. Can, can I interest you in some swords? All right, we'll just spam sell them. And 4,400, yeah, perfect. About 1,100 GP per. And I actually need to be going the other way for coal. Nice, nice. Okay, how much is the helmet from Pexa? Because we can get that while we're over there. I'm trying to think of what's the best thing to was order to upgrade this stuff in. I feel like getting all of the adamant things other than the body would be good. And have the significantly longer grind for the plate body. Because we got to remember we can sell. That's going to be helpful. We can sell the gear that we're currently wearing that's not adamant. I don't know if I factored that. I don't think I factored that into my calculation earlier. But that's going to slightly reduce the number of trips that we have to run. The payoff is going to be so cool. It's going to be awesome having... 2001 escape account with the best gear that we can get in the game right now. Let's check uh, Pexa's cost. Well, look at all these great helmets. Okay, so I can sell mine for 1430 and buy for only 3520. Let's go. Yeah. Buy large adamant helm, sell large mithril helm. Oh, I could sell it for 800 gold. Yeah. That's epic. Let's freaking go. Two pieces of adamant gear. Oh yeah, this is going to help the the motivation out to be acquiring this piecemeal. Excellent. Now what was it like 6k or something? Maybe 7k for the legs? I can't remember. It might have been higher than that. We buy the legs in Al Karid, so I can go to the furnace there. We might have just recently checked that. I can't even remember. Um, <laughs> might have to go look again just to see what the prices are like over there. Back down to under 2K. But we'll get over that again on this load. This is this has been the stubborn rock repeatedly. But I don't want to skip it. I don't want to just move on to the next rock. I know that's not how the math works, or at least I I actually don't know that. Alright. Let's go. Nice. Sweet. Okay. 38 mining. We were right behind uh, Twinrova on the high scores last time. My 
main account. Let's see, rsc.vet. Go to uh, high scores, not preservation, but high scores. 2001 scape. Well, I don't know if I got this or not. Let's see. Oh, now I did. Sweet. I forgot a page. I think it's page four. Yeah, rank 73 on the high scores is Twinrova. And rank 77 now is Theowen. Oh, weren't we in the top 75 in the last episode? Yeah, I think we've been pushed out of the top 75. So we're going to have to keep uh, keep up on our grind. Hopefully we should be gaining... Whoops. Hopefully we should be gaining... Um, mining and smithing levels in this journey. Which is going to help us in the long run if we ever decide that we want to go for full adamant smithing levels, right? That could be... This will definitely be helpful to kind of put us in a better position for reaching those goals. 30 was... Um, steel mining so at what point can we mine mithril like is it going to be wow am I in the right yeah I'm in the right spot um, is it going to be 40 did I skip a rock I'm really confused right now 5, 6, 7, 8 9, 10, 11. Yeah, I, I, must have, I must have just skipped over a rock at some point. Strange. Yeah, at what point am I going to be able to mine mithril? And at what point am I going to be able to smith, smelt mithril bars? Quite interesting. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is going to be eleven. Whoops. It's also funny um, after grinding on two thousand one scape, even switching over to preservation is so much easier because, like, for instance, you don't. Oh, cool. You don't have to. Um, Click on the rock every single time you mine it. There was a funny comment on one of my early 2001 scape videos where someone said something along the lines of, just click on it once. Like, why are you clicking on the rock every time? Like, panicked that I was wasting so much time clicking on the rocks. Like, I'm sorry, sir or madam. That is just how this game rolls. Oh. Flag. Oh, and I read the next uh, action too. That's cool. Cool, sweet. 12 coal. Let's head over to the iron mine. Got our pathing down. <laughs> our process. Let's see, where are we lacking in skills? Crafting, yeah. That's gonna be a hard one. Thieving cannot level above three. We've got all the thieving levels that we can earn in 2001 Skate. So they have the skill on your screen at this point, I guess, to get you like ready and excited for it. But the only thieving XP that you can actually receive is XP from Black Knight's Fortress or the Spy Quest as some call it. Tailoring, I don't think is implemented here. It was a hypothetical skill. Kind of just got rolled into crafting, it seems. Yeah, super interesting. As far as gear goes, we've got the Adamant Axe, the Adamant Helmet. We're going to get the Mithril Shield from Frost Giants or Ice Giants. 
So we actually only have two pieces of gear to purchase. So once we buy the legs, then we're on the long haul after that. We're saving up for the plate body. It's gonna be such a long haul. It's gonna be worth it. In the end, it's gonna look epic. Look at that helmet. We're getting there. It's gonna look cool with the legs. Like, having everything but the plate body is still gonna look cool. Okay, is that it? Yep. All right. To the furnace. Let's go to the Alcarid furnace. So I can take one more look at the cost of some adam adamant plate legs. So I can get some Lappy PTSD. By the way, to shout out Lappy, um, there and Beast Fable, there is a new server called neat free to play and it's actually developed by beast fable so if you haven't heard of this maybe go check it out you can if you go to beast fables channel not only are you going to find some awesome runescape classic content but you will also find uh, lots of content on his new private server yeah neat free to play and my understanding i haven't played on it yet um, my understanding is that it is a free-to-play locked server with an emphasis on free-to-play PvP. So that seems very interesting. Again, not 2001 Scape, but 2003 Scape, right? RuneScape Classic, as it were. Okay, let's go talk to... Louis legs. I want to see how much we're going to be able to sell our legs for versus how much it's going to cost to buy. Hey, want to buy some armor? What have you got? Love the pants. Okay, we can sell our mithril plate mail legs for sixteen ninety. We can buy the next one for sixty four hundred. So sixty four hundred minus one thousand is fifty four hundred minus six hundred is uh, 4,800 and then like 4,700 GP-ish. So we'll, we'll, we'll call it 4,800. So that is not that many runs before we can get our plate legs. And that's pretty exciting. But yeah, uh, neat free-to-play. Seems like a cool server. And Lappy... I believe is like on the high scores. I don't know if it's for um, levels or for kills. It might be for either kills or kill death ratio or something. But Lappy is uh, seemingly living it up over on the neat free to play server, which is awesome. Go give that one a look. Okay. Let's head back up the hill. So we need, I already forgot what I said, 4,800 GP. So in this run, we're going to go from 17 to 28 to 39 to 5,000. So that's 17 to uh, 28 is this current run. So then after that, one run for 39 and then one run for 5K. So at the end of this run, we'll have two more runs, and that's going to be it before we can get our plate mail legs. And that is motivating. And this is how you this is how you do this whole RuneScape grind thing, right? You got to set smaller uh, attainable goals on your way to <laughs> your larger goal, and think about how short the time is going to be until you get to that short-term goal. And then as soon as that's done, you know, set another short-term goal, do that again and again until before you know it you've 
short-term goal your way through to your long-term goal. At least that is how I do it. With RuneScape, with work, with school, with hobbies, with basically anything and everything. Let's see if we get aggroed. Are one of these Dark Wizards special? Yeah, there's a level 25 Dark Wizard. Yep. We got aggroed. That's okay. Oh, yeah. Hit those fives. Let's go. Body runes. Nice. This is obviously not the path to take. Coins. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Okay, the grind continues. We need to get to an anvil stat. Let's see, our smithing is 36, so it's only lagging by two levels. I think that was because of questing, like maybe Dork's quest or something gave us smithing levels. At 40 mining, at some point we could try mithril. Um, Smelting and stuff, mining, smelting, all that good stuff once we hit the 40s. I don't know if that is the right level for it. It might be more like 50 for Mithril. I think Adamant stuff is like in the 70s or 80s, so it actually would make more sense if Mithril was in the 60s and 50s. So I'm going to assume that we're going to be working with steel until level like 50 or something is my guess, just for scaling. I don't think the value of these body runes is going to be worth the time of picking that up, them up, but on an Iron Man account, I feel like I can't drop anything. JK, Ulto and Iron Man gives you the excuse to drop things. Can I help you at all? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, let's sell our three body runes for one coin each. Mad cash. Let's go see if this shopkeeper is interested in any swords today. Let's dump off all of our short swords and spam click towards the coal. And we're at 2887. We need 2k gold to buy the plate legs. Let's freaking go. I'm so excited. Which means we only need two runs, two more runs, before we can buy. And that is excellent. We're making progress, guys. And we still have our amulet of accuracy. We didn't drop it. I mean, we dropped it, but it didn't spawn out of the game. I was just thinking that for the fashionscape, at a minimum, minimum for fashionscape, you might be able to try to recover the ghost amulet, the ghost speak amulet from Father Ernie in the swamp. If you lost your amulet of accuracy but you still wanted to have that nice fashion as if you still had it, that could possibly be a choice for uh, those other fashion scaping aficionados among you. Sweet. All right. And then, I guess, we're going to have the money for buying it. But since it's in Al-Kharid anyway, it might make more sense 
to start the next run? Do we want to start the next run and then buy the gear as we swing around to Alcarid for optimizing our pathing here? So we minimize the time spent wasted, quote, quote, in going to purchase the legs. It might take another little moment of patience for me, but we could do that. We could indeed do that. Oops. Okay, sweet. LOL. I don't know why, what's with my clicking today. I'm just, you know, all over the place. Pro 2001 Scaper here. All right. About to be at the halfway mark for this load of coal. That was six. We need 12. We have already spent the time to optimize our inventory. Nice, look at that. Look at those success rates. There's no ore available. Wow, we made it all the way back around just in time for the next node to spawn. That's cool. Yeah, we dropped a lot of stuff to try to optimize our inventory for this mining smithing grind. Which is why we gotta take it all the way through. We gotta follow through on our goal so that we didn't optimize in vain. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, nine, 10, 11, 12, yep. Nice, all right, here we go, over to iron. Yeah, this series has me wanting to play like every other variant of RuneScape in Ultimate Iron Man mode. Because of the sheer challenge of it. It's so crazy having to juggle your inventory. Something that I didn't think would be fun, but it is. It's very, very fun if you've never tried it. 2001 Scape is a great place to test it out. No bank. And it's perfect for like recording because it's not like my main has to be ultimate, you know, you can play the game normally on the main account. But then this is like challenge mode. A more epic account. Man, this is so cool. Our weapon aim is 33 and weapon power is 42 with the adamant axe. Then our armor is up to 80. Oh my gosh. Wow, are we going to get over 100 with the adamant plate body? I'm going to have to compare stats. Between versions of the game when we play on different servers. All right, let's collect our six iron ore. Three to go. Two more. Last one. Maybe we'll get the last one. <laughs> All right. This time, let's go Lumby. Let's go Lumby. So I've been reading uh, the lore in my RuneScape Kingdoms book. 
And it's interesting when it talks about Lumbridge, it talks about how Lumbridge has always been ruled by a line of dukes and Duke Horatio is of course the current duke but descends from the original duke polonius that ruled from lumbridge castle and duke horatio has apparently led lumbridge um, forces into battle against uh, like bandits and whatnot threats around Lumbridge. So Horatio is actually has a, a decent reputation. I thought that was interesting. Didn't really understand that. Kind of cool. And Lumbridge did not always, was not always a part of the kingdom of Mistelin. So if you're not familiar, Mistelin is the kingdom. Um, it's where we're at right now. It starts at Varrock in the north, and it goes down to Lumbridge, and I believe, I could be wrong, I think Draenor is a part of the Kingdom of Mistelin. And maybe Edgeville. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe Edgeville. But Lumbridge apparently was not always a uh, in the Kingdom of Mistelin. Originally it was kind of its own thing and at some point swore fealty to uh, King the King in Varrock, which is King Roald, right? The third um, is the current king and I believe it's been King Roald like from 2001 and into the modern game. I think it's the same king. I don't think that has changed at any point in time. It's interesting. So Lumbridge originally was kind of its own thing. At some point it swore loyalty to the King of Varrock, but uh, Lumbridge has more autonomy than you would expect in a city, um, in a kingdom. Yeah, the Duke has a little more power than you might expect. Yeah, I thought all of that was um, pretty interesting. Of course, then there's the Kingdom of Asgarnia, right? Which um, starts in Falador, whereas the capital is Falador. Like Varrock here is the capital of Mistelin. And yeah, some interesting lore there that I learned is that King, uh, let's see, King Valance, I believe is his name, or Vance. It's either Vance or Valance, I'm, I'm already forgetting. The king of Falador is like infirm and not currently in a condition to rule. So Ceramic Vaz uh, actually is ruling in his place. And Ceramic Vaz is, I always call him Vars, but apparently it's, it's Vaz. Um, is the the head of the White Knights in Falador and is also kind of standing in as a ruler of Asgarnia. But then there's a prince in Berthorp, and I'm forgetting his name. I'll eventually get this all down, don't you worry. But there's a prince in Berthorp, which is not in 2001 Scape. The prince in Berthorp like will be the next in line for the throne after King Valance dies, right? So I don't know, it's kind of interesting. There might be some kind of power struggle situation between that prince and ceramic, but I, I don't know that RuneScape has ever kind of followed through on that storyline, which is quite interesting. Um, we, we didn't really get a lot of that in our playthrough of the quests in 2001 Scape, but we did in the Knight Sword, the Squire, 
Wasn't the squire for ceramic vase? Ceramic vars? <laughs> how do, how do y'all say it? Uh, type in the comments the fon how phonetically you say the name ceramic vase. Also, the the city in Kandarin, another kingdom, right? The capital of Kandarin. What do you call that? Type that below. Brown has logged in. Not Brawn, mind you. We learned in the last episode that it's Brown and that he is, he just had a baby. Yeah, just had a baby. Or is having a baby. I think it's just had a baby. Which is epic. Brown Jr. running around. Okay. Well, guys, this is the last run before we have enough money to purchase a set of adamant plate legs, which is definitely going to be an upgrade to this account's fashionscape. And, of course, our stats. Right, it's gonna make us more powerful, but most importantly, the fashionscape. Any kind of MMO having like the the rare item is always fun, especially if you had to work hard for it. If you see like a random number get typed sometimes, I actually have an RPG uh, mouse that I play with. It's the uh, Corsair Scimitar. And it has uh, number keys on the side. So if I'm playing like RuneScape 3 or World of Warcraft, um, I can actually, or you know, Guild Wars, Elder Scrolls Online, all the MMOs. If I'm playing any of those games with like abilities to fire with a number, I can actually not even use the keyboard. I can, I can use my thumb on my mouse and just kind of click the number that I want to fire. Which is really cool. But yeah, sometimes uh, when I'm skilling intensively, like right now, or doing a lot of clicking, I'll get, uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll accidentally press some of the buttons on the side. Not too often, but often enough that you've probably seen it happen several times especially in runescape uh classic where i'm clicking so much or 2001 scape where we're clicking so many times clicking simulator all right last call Yeah, last call for the run. We're kind of getting into rhythm here. This is not feeling so bad. And it's nice just having a new path to run after we ran the Southeast Veraka Mine path so many times because we got everything we needed there. We didn't need to go anywhere else. But sometimes it gets old, like going to the same spot. And we never we never went and did Dork's Quest. For a long time, we didn't do Dork's Quest. That would have made it a little less tedious, being able to pick between Varrock to Lumbridge, Varrock to Alcarid, and Remington, Falador, Dork's Anvils. Would have been another good running spot. And there, it still would be okay, except there's not coal over there. Like, we might be able to do Remington. We might actually be able to do Remington Barbarian Village, Falador. So go to Remington, get your iron. Go to Barbarian Village, get your coal. On the way back, hit the furnace in Falador, 
the anvil at Dorix, go back to Remington. That could work. That wouldn't be so bad. Might be able to mix that up. We might try that sometime and see if we can go faster than 11 minutes in a run. To translate to more GP per hour. Yeah, that would be that would be cool to try. We're gonna have to uh, it, once once I start feeling burnt out on this path, we'll have to start. We'll have to try that out. Rotate over to that spot. It's cool that, but that Barbarian Village has coal. Like I don't recall really using Barbarian Village for mining that often, so I don't know. It's kind of fun. Also love how Ultimate Iron Man mode like completely changes the meta. Um, you know, you're not going back and forth to the bank over and over again for one task and then back and forth to the bank over and over again for another. You've got to take all of your ore with you to the furnace and then to the the anvil so that you're like doing all these rotations and that to me is cool okay we're going south for the winter just kidding for the furnace let's run lumbridge again and then next time by we're going to go to al -Karid. next time by we're going to be buying a new set of plate legs which I am freaking excited for. It's going to be a big upgrade. One of the biggest upgrades so far for this account. And honestly, I'm so excited. After that, our next two upgrades are going to be huge. It's going to be a little bit before we actually get to do that. One is going to be the adamant plate mill body. The other is going to be a better shield. What do we have? We have the iron kite shield right now. Oh my gosh. What a noob. I wonder if we could even go try to farm the Mithril Square Shield and make money off of drops while we're at it? Like, is there anything that the Ice Giants would drop that's worth some money? Could be something to consider. I bet with uh, Adamant Plate Legs, Adamant Axe and everything, we should be able to handle an Ice Giant in the near future. Gonna have to get our melee stats up a little bit but maybe if we got them to like the 30 range maybe that would work yeah i don't know it would be fun in the near future to go try to clear the asgarnian ice dungeon You know what might be fun would be to like keep a log of the drops that we get from something. Like I know we have Wikipedia to look up, like the RuneScape wiki, but if you're gonna play on your own, like maybe like taking legit notes while we're playing of like what drops what and how often. I don't know, that could be kind of cool. like get more serious about where to get what from where yeah then instead of using the wiki you're using your own like self-created information based on what you've seen that would be kind of cool maybe add, add an interesting aspect to the game it could be kind of fun to go around and just kill stuff and see, oh, not armor. See what you can get out of it. 
see what everything drops. Sometimes you need to know which creature drops something, and the wiki makes it really easy to look up what things drop what, but if you don't know, like that a hobgoblin drops with limpwort root, then that's going to be a while going around the game world and killing everything. So what if you just did that from the get-go and made note of what drops what as you're playing an RPG? That could be pretty cool. I might have to up my note-taking. could add an element to this. There's something on Notion, which is a note-taking app that I use to make um, pages available, like, publicly. Maybe, like, read-only instead of write access. I wonder if I could make notes about the games that I'm playing and then, like, make them visible for anyone to see. That could be pretty fun. All right, with this... We now have 5k GP. Woo, let's freaking go. Which is more than the 4,800 GP that we need to buy a set of adamant plate legs. And instead of going straight there to buy them, which I really want to do so badly, I am instead gonna go back to Barbarian Village, to the coal mine, and we're gonna keep doing our runs and we'll We'll go to the Alcarid furnace instead of Lumbridge and purchase our legs on the way around so that we can be more efficient. That's why we're going to do it, but I'm sad about it. But it's going to be okay. It's going to be better this way. Delayed gratification. It's going to be better this way. Mining is still 38. Smithing has not hit 37 in all of these runs. So we're definitely very far away from what used to be the case when we were about every single inventory getting a level, a smithing level. Definitely no longer the case. The mining smithing grind um, is going to be a long one. That is so okay. Totally fine with that. I'm so excited. I want to get this coal so fast so that we can go buy our adamant plate legs. This character is really, finally, seriously moving up in the world. We've only gained one level today, right? Just one mining level. No, we've gained... Have we gained only one mining level today, or did we gain two? I honestly cannot remember. There was another four typed by my thumb on the side of the mouse. Three more. Yeah. Let's go. Two more. There was no ore available. We rotated around that fast. Epic. One more coal. All right, let's go get some iron. You just advanced one mining level. Let's freaking go. Uh, 39 mining. Nice. I was just complaining about it just in time to actually hit another mining level. I just love how, like, unfinished this game is yet it's a full game and it's so fun like look at how much fun that we can have in this wow 21 would be 20 years old so like we're pushing 25 years this 24 
year old game. Like stuff that doesn't even have like an examine. A rocky outcrop. I think it's a poisonous one, this mushroom. These lead upstairs. And then nothing on the imp. Wow. It's just so funny. All of the little pieces of it, like tailoring's not implemented. Just a little snapshot in time for RuneScape. Which is really cool. I love the modern games. I play them a lot. And I love that they're always adding new things. It's like one of the biggest perks of playing RuneScape. And if, if you if you try to like define what RuneScape really is, it's like evolution would be a huge part of that. Because RuneScape is one of the most updated games of all time. They're always introducing new things. The game is always changing. And that's hard for some people because, you know, once people get familiar with something and start to get used to it, they're, they tend to react poorly to change, to not like change. But RuneScape has always been change. Um, you know, people that, like, really feel nostalgic about, let's say, the 2007 period, as an example, is a good one that people are fond about. Think about how different that is from here. How modern and how changed and how the game became something completely different between now and then. But the same at Spirit. Same in Spirit. And the same thing is like the step from 2007 to like modern RuneScape and several steps in between. The game changed significantly but it kept its core spirit. And I don't know. Uh, it's always been changing. It's never stood still. But some people, you know, really enjoy a particular time period. And even if you don't have like one favorite, it is really cool to find a snapshot in, in time for RuneScape. Because, because it's evolving so much, like you might not have been able to experience what the end game was like at that point in time. And that's a really, that's a really powerful thing. Um, a lot of these RPGs, these online RPGs like RuneScape, are about the late game experience, but they give you a fun grind on the way to getting to the end game. But like maybe the game marches forward before you were able to complete your goals, right? So for instance, I never got to earn a Cape of Legends in RuneScape Classic, right? With these older servers, I can actually go back and try to accomplish that in the way that you would have had to do it in that time. And that, to me, of feeling like you didn't miss out because you have a chance to, you know, go back and take on your your goals from the past, that's one of the biggest draws to these private servers. Saying, can I... I know I can, like, kill the Caliphate Queen in RuneScape now, right? Because my gear is so overpowered for her. But can I go back to 2005 scape and fight and kill her with the gear of the era? I don't know. That would be fun to find out. It would, uh, you know, you'd feel accomplished in doing it. As an example, can I kill the King Black Dragon in RuneScape Classic? I never did that. Can I do it with the gear of the era? Uh, that would be freaking cool. All right, guys, I've been rambling, but we're finally here. We finally did it. It's by far not our biggest goal with this mining smith and grind, but it is a big one. The last one before the plate body. Oh my gosh, let's talk to Louis Legs. Let's get some adamant plate legs. What have you got? Take a look, see? All right. Hopefully I did the math right. Let's sell our mithril plate legs. And buy a new set of adamant plate mill legs. All right, we're down to 400 gold. We're, we're about broke. But let's step outside. Got our adamant helm. Got our adamant axe. 
And now, adamant plate legs. Oh, just, just in time for the one hour reminder. Adamant plate legs, let's freaking go check that out. How sick does that look? Oh my gosh. That is so freaking cool. We are two pieces of gear away from the best gear that we can reasonably expect to obtain in the game without a significant extended grind happening. An even more significant extended grind. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, what a freaking upgrade. I am so stoked about this. And now, all that's left is the Mithril Square Shield as a drop. And then the Adamant Plate Body. Which is going to be a whopping 40k, I believe. But something we didn't we obviously did not take into account is how much we can sell our current equipment for. We we just sold our legs for what 1600 gold. So I'd imagine that the chainmail body is probably less than that. So it's probably not going to be a significant factor. But it would still be good to know how much that chain body will sell for. A series of connected metal rings. I don't know that I've examined some of these things. A large metal shield. These look pretty heavy, the plate legs. A vicious looking axe, I agree. I've read that one before. A full face helmet. Yeah, maybe let's go in the Champions Guild and see the cost again. I think it's 40k is what we said. And at some point we'll go to Falador and check on Wayne's Chains. Yeah, check it out. Check us out in the Champions Guild. So epic. Hello there. Want to have a look at what we're selling today? Yes, please. Forty thousand forty GP. Black plate metal legs, large black helmet, new cape. Can sell it here for seven hundred eighty GP. Probably a little more in Falador, but probably not too much more. Definitely got to go down the emergency escape ladder just for fun. You climb down the emergency escape ladder. This is hilarious. Okay, let's go to the anvil and hammer out some steel swords. Get our 1100 GP. And so if you don't count the 100, that's like 40 trips just to get 40k. So maximum 40 trips, but other factors are going to take a, a trip or two off. So across 40 trips, that extra 100 turns into 4,000 gold. So that is at a minimum four less trips. So we're down to 36. Not so bad. Then it's not really gonna matter, but you have the whatever the mithril chain body is gonna sell for. And we'll say that that at most is gonna take one trip off, probably not even a full trip, but it's possible. It's possible that it's worth a trip. Which will bring us down to 35 trips. 
We only have 400 gold, so that might actually cover the rest of the distance for the mithril chain body to count as a trip. So, seeming like 35 trips, 34 trips-ish, I think 35. It's probably the final answer for how many trips we have left. We have 1,500 GP. Out of about probably 39k that we're going to have to save up. So here goes the longer grind. And thankfully, our mining level is increasing as we go. Smithing level doesn't really have an effect as we're kind of already smithing the item we want to be smithing for money making. But our mining will affect it. So the higher mining level is going to make the trip go faster and faster as we're able to mine these coal rocks more and more quickly and of course we're always going to have to deal with like walking can't cut that time out we can optimize our path but that's about it yeah I obtained some coal whoops but every um, every mining level should make a good impact like look we're I feel like we're gaining why do I keep clicking that? Oh, I know why. Because our order must have been rearranged by selling something. So I need to drop stuff to make that, to put that in the right slot. Okay. This is terrifying, but let's go ahead and drop a bunch of stuff. Yeah, this is terrifying. Okay. Let's take adamant plate legs, um, adamant helmet, iron shield, adamant axe, and then um, pickaxe. Let's take mithril chainmail body. Amulet of Accuracy, Cape. Let's do Coins and then Hammer. Okay, that's fine. Then we can do Red Berry Pie, Pie Dish, Coal Coal. Nice. Perfect. Okay, and I can do the whole Twin Rova look, Theowen look, with the helmet off, even though it looks really cool. Yeah, doing this with the blue cape is pretty fun. Yeah, this is epic. Okay. Now let's get back to mining. Um, yeah, having that off by one slot was really messing with me. My subconscious was just used to the pickaxe being exactly in that slot. Sweet. All right, one round of coal there down. Two to go. Nice. Some of these rocks are being really kind to us at the moment. It's kind of cool going around with uh, no helmet and just equipping it when you need to. In um, other variants of RuneScape, We'll have to wear all of our equipment if we're playing in Ultimate 
Iron Man mode because those are going to be inventory slots. We're actually going to have more slots because our equipment is going to come out of our bag to be on our body. It's actually going to be better. This is even harder for that reason that you have to spend inventory slots on your equipment. In both 2001 Scape and Classic, that is the case. 2004 Scape, you'll be able to equip items and they'll come out of your bag and onto your body. Quite interesting. All right, three more coal for this load. And then what I want to do is I want to actually um, go over to Falador and check out Wayne's Chains. Oh, we got it already. Nice. Check out Wayne's Chains um, cost. How much they'll take my chain mail body for is what I'm interested in. Only two more coal, and then we can move on. Go check out Wayne's Chains. Yeah, one more coal. Look how cool. Oh my gosh, our character with the green. All right. Yeah, let's go to let's go to Fally. Let's go say hi to Wayne. And hope, hope that he'll take 1k for our chain body. Ooh, let's check our armor now. What was it, like 80? Ooh, 70, what? Oh, my helmet's off. 89, all right. I was like, huh? How, how would I downgrade stats? <laughs> yeah, running around with the helmet off. That's a huge jump. 19 armor for your helmet. Yeah, you got to make sure that's on when in uh, combat for sure. This just looks so sick. Wow. The green is just awesome. Crazy that there's no rune in 2001 Scape, so full Addy is like the kit. If we were on the preservation server, there would be a whole new tier to unlock, but there might be easier ways of gaining access to a lot of those items, I guess. Um, maybe the rune plate body from Ozan, right? Do you have to buy it from him if you're not going to smith it yourself? Yeah, on, a, on an ultimate Iron Man, it, it would still probably be challenging to get a full kit of rune over there. But it would look sick. Okay, let's head over to Wayne's World. Welcome to Wayne's Chains. Do you want to buy or sell some chain mail? Yes, please. Let's not accidentally actually sell it, but... Sell for twelve sixty seven. Let's go. Wow, it really matters where you sell something. You can buy an adamant chain body for forty eight hundred. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's way faster than forty k. Um, but probably not worth it. I mean, you'd get a bonus in armor while you're while you're grinding out the gold for the plate body, but yeah, no, I think we just, I think we just uh, push on towards the 40K, but 1267, wow. So we really do only need about, quote, quote, only about 39K to buy the plate body. Have to come over to Falador, sell the body, and then run over to the Champions Guild to buy it. 
but totally doable. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm heading to Remington to collect the iron. Just for fun. Just because why not? Since we're over here. Yeah, and this goes straight down to the mine. Let's see if there's anybody over here. It's usually a pretty hot spot. And I can never remember where anything is over here. I think this is iron over here. I think maybe these three nodes, these three rocks are all iron. Yeah, nice. Perfect. Well, I wonder if that is. Oh no, this one's like gold or something, I think. Or silver. So the problem is, even with this method, we're going to want to go to Varrock to sell our swords. So that is the problem. Yeah. Just trying to think about the path here. So Barbarian Village for coal, Remington for iron. Then you go to Falador for the furnace, so it's on the way to Dorix Anvils. Oh, and then you go past Barbarian Village to get to Varrock, sell it, and come right back to Barbarian Village. So that's a nice line, right? Am I thinking about this correctly? Yeah, you go back and forth across everything. Yeah, I guess let's try that out. Let's see how this path goes for a bit. See if we can maybe get it done in faster than 11 minutes. For some reason, I don't think you will be able to because of the length that you have to walk. But it's all kind of in the line, so like maybe having to go to Lumbergen back in instance is an inefficiency when it's not on the path. It's more of like a star shape. I don't know. I don't know which path is faster. We should we should try to compare. This path is nice too, just because it's different. Um, you know, seeing different parts of the world is always fun. And using Dork's Anvil that we earned from the quest. Dork's quest is happy. Okay, over to the Anvil. Still not gained a smithing level. And Oh yeah, look how close this is. Wow, look how close the furnace and anvils are. This might be a better path. I don't know. We'll have to time it from the sail to the sail. We'll do it again. We'll time it. Okay. Make weapon, sword, short sword. Do that several times. You think, oh, making short swords instead of long swords is more tedious because you have to make twice as many short swords as long swords, but they sell for more money, right? That's what you'd think, but when you're making steel, it's like we only have the inventory space to make six swords. So it's really not that big of a difference from three to six items to have to make. It's only a few more clicks to make short swords instead of long swords. So then here is the long run. But then we're going to come back across this efficiently to Barbarian Village and then to Remington. We're going to pass things, but on the way back we cross things, so I don't know. It might give the other path a run for its money. Super stoked that we're at this point though, y'all being finished with quests and now going after the loot. Going after money making and, and gear is always a fun part of RuneScape.
how many times have you had a long grind session that was driven by acquiring one new piece of shiny gear? The things we do for one item in, in RuneScape is so funny. On my original RuneScape Classic account, I say original, uh, I started playing RuneScape in 2006 and I joined RuneScape Classic through the, uh, the openings that they had after the fact for people to make accounts and play on the old servers. Uh, the best that my character got to was um, full adamant gear. So I actually never had rune gear until RuneScape 2. Yeah, and that would have, uh, and that took me forever. <laughs> and I played free to play most of the beginning of my RuneScape career as well, so a lot of this cool stuff was just not available to me when I was playing. I can't believe RuneScape turns. 25 in January. A quarter of a century of scaping. Absolutely bonkers, and this is where it all started. Yes, you can. Okay, I gotta look at my clock. Alright, after we dump these off, we gotta check the time. Uh, I'm gonna let my little video timer hit 30. Take just a second and about now yep okay I've got a good 30 second mark to start timing so we are headed to the barbarian village that's our first stop on our new attempt at a rotation we've got 11 minutes to say that this path is better also well we have to take the new mining levels into account, right? So it should be, we should get the coal a little faster than we did when I timed the last route. So if it's close, you know, we'll know that there's potentially some uh, wiggle room for the mining level increasing. Wow, crazy. Already about to have one of those minutes gone just walking to the barbarian village. And this is what I think might be the downfall of this method. Is the distance from the Verox Sword Shop to Remington. Because that's a further distance than to Lumbridge. And it's probably safe to say that this is the most time-consuming portion of the journey, right? Gathering coal. But Dork's Anvil being right next to the furnace, that might give that method an edge. Like, Remington's not that far away from the furnace. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Man, not not wanting to get this coal. You found a diamond. Whoa. Okay, that's gonna mess us up. Okay, can I still obtain coal here or no? There we go. Sweet. That was one round of the three rounds of coal that we need. And we're having a very poor um, RNG for rocks so far. There we go. All it takes is for a few fast ones to balance it out. Yep, 
nice. Wow, that might be too fast. We're gonna drop the pie dish to make room for that diamond. And we can sell it. Sweet, three more coal. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, yep. Two more. One more. Okay, then run, run, run. To the north. Now we're gonna get it all the way to Remington. How long did that take? Um, it took five minutes. <laughs> to get an inventory of uh, coal. So now we have six minutes to go to Remington, mine the iron, smelt the bars, get it into swords, and get over to Varrock. Yikes. Now, presumably this distance from Varrock to the Barbarian Village and mining coal, that is identical between methods. Really now the difference is that I have to go way further to the iron mine than going to Verox Iron Mine. And is it way further? Also, would it be faster if I went around Falador on that side? And yeah, we've got this weird, like, S shape inefficiently to get over to Remington. So you would arrive at the Southeast Varrock Mine first. Then you'd have to go farther away to Lumbridge. And then back to Varrock. But then the Varrock Anvils are right next to, like literally right next to the, the shop. It's taking us about two minutes to walk all the way to Remington. So, so I am thinking that this method might might not work out, but it might work out if it's just that we got a bad pull on the coal. Yep, let's get over to those iron nodes. This is so fun. It's like a race against the clock when we're when we're timing. I recommend that you try little experiments like this just to add variation to your gameplay because it's fun. We we'll misclick. Can't afford that. Wow. <laughs> The universe does not want this method to uh, get a good time. Like, really? Iron? We're, we're scratching the rock that many times? That's so funny. Alright, last ore. Sweet. Run, run, run. Okay, so where are we at? Um, it's been seven minutes and 30 seconds-ish. It's about to have been, yeah, almost seven minutes and 30 seconds. And we've got until 11. Hmm. It only took two minutes to get over to the Barbarian Village. It might be about identical. These are going to be very close. And bad RNG on this run might be outweighed by having a higher, a lower mining level on the, the last run that we timed. Let's 
Okay, so uh, about a few seconds ago, we have three minutes to get to our destination and sell our swords. Keep going, keep going, whoops. LOL Global has been removed from your friends list. Dang, I'm totally messing that up. Okay. This has been quite a funny trip. Wow, I think that's the fastest I've ever clicked the the swords. Do I need to add dollar sign global or global dollar sign or something? Should take number one sometimes this this weekend. Oh gee. Huge, huge congrats in advance. I'm rooting for you. Wow, that is so epic. Wow. It's so funny that we did actually removed global from the chat. That was a mess up, but uh, time right now is 11 minutes. So we're about one minute behind on our time. And I don't know that we can account for it purely from that RNG issue. I don't know, maybe we run back and forth between the methods. You know, one method, the other method and try to keep a time going figure out which which strategy is going to be the best because i definitely did not do that the most efficient <laughs> efficient way possible yeah so it's going to end up taking about 12 minutes for this method I don't know how about the last one was because it's hitting 12 minutes right now. So we'll see. Okay. And time. Here we go. New timer. This time we're going to go um, the Lumbridge path. This is so fun, by the way. <laughs> if you're ever on a grind and you're trying to break things up, find two different paths and time them if you can. Two different methods. Trying to trying to compute the best method <clears throat> just gives you something extra to do on top of the game. Not that RuneScape's not fun in itself, but like you get out of RuneScape what you put into it, a hundred percent. And I feel like that's probably with most things in life, let alone. 
most games. But okay, something another optimization I'm going to do. This is going to be a very minimal one, like teeny tiny optimization. When I'm on the Lumbridge path, let's take the rocks in this order. But when we're on the uh, Remington path, why don't we rotate around the rocks the other way so that we end up on the same side as Remington? This is good that we're getting uh, similar bad RNG results across runs. <laughs> We can expect that to happen probably at least once per load, and uh, we're just getting that out of the way first on this run. <laughs> also, sometimes I debate between whether I should just fire the next click or, um, whoops. Oh yeah, we got around before the ore respawned. That's cool. Do we really have four? Yeah. Wow. Like, do I just do not read the chat and just fire, or do I wait and try to read it, lose some time, but save that one tick when I finally actually land the coal? It's a question that I have personally. Sweet. Nice. Pretty good uh, run there. Wow, this is a, quite the loud truck outside my house. Don't know if you, <laughs> you could hear that. Okay, last round of four coal. Man, this is the stubborn rock today. Okay, three to go. Yeah, so whatever, whichever path that you decide to take, if you're on a steel running journey like me, your mining level and your ability to mine coal seems to be the biggest differentiator. The most important factor here. How fast can you mine coal is really the question. Sweet. Last coal. Sweet, okay. Let's take off. Okay, so okay, so one, two. It took us four minutes and thirty seconds this time to get our coal. So we have a thirty second advantage over the other methods. So really it's like we need to time it from the end of our coal, essentially, but Yeah, this path seems, I don't know, like it's got a better chance. Just because this little curve here is smooth, it takes you right over to the mine, but then you have to go away. I don't know, I might be overanalyzing this. They're probably just very, very similar. This path might be a little faster for steel specifically. Okay, almost at the iron mine, and this is definitely closer than getting to the Remington mine, 
is it? Maybe 30 seconds closer. Maybe this is where we shave some of that time. Okay, so we've actually had um, some time pass. And, and by some time, I mean a few weeks between <laughs> the cut of the last clip um, and the start of this one. So I, I actually have no idea exactly where I was on <laughs> timing this route. Um, so yeah, par pardon me for that. I ran up against finals at school and I've just been grinding uh, grinding out some, some school recently, but school is, is now out and um, it's a beautiful Memorial Day weekend. So I am hopping back onto 2001 Scape on Theowen for the first time in a bit. And I think, um, I think what I'm actually going to do is finish up this run and then kind of like restart uh, a new episode so that I can um, <laughs> just kind of uh, start from the beginning without having to try to kind of remember what I was talking about, what I was doing um, at, at the end of this session. So this is kind of like a, a, a reset after a little bit of time. So yeah, and it looks like when I left off, um, we had 12 coal and we're collecting iron so that we could smelt steel, right? And that is, of course, so that we can make steel short swords and sell them for money so we can save up for an adamant plate body. Yeah, and I've got everything all adamant except for the plate body. Awesome. So just getting my bearings back <laughs> after the after the gap. So let's go smelt this. Yeah, and if I remember right, we had like less than 40 trips, I think, to um, to get the money for the plate body. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, only, I think it was like, I'm trying to remember, was it like eight hours of grinding? And I have to have put in at least... I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour after that. So maybe there's seven and a half or seven hours of a grind left. Whatever the case, let's go. I am excited to be back on 2001 Scape, back to grinding. Um, I need to go and check to see how far back I've fallen on the leaderboards in this short, short but long enough, short break, but long enough for me to kind of forget what I was doing. Whoa, a diamond, an uncut diamond, nice. Oh yeah, did I have to, I think I maybe dropped something to make room for that. Yeah, that is sweet. Oh, and I love that we're past iron, so we have the, the guarantee smelt now. The iron phase of your smithing journey is always a, a crazy one. Sometimes it's just like disheartening, you just kind of have to ignore <laughs> your progress eat trip and just and just grind you just have to kind of you, you just kind of have to grind it out it's so funny that this path is not as efficient as slipping through this little gap while you're doing iron smithing because you might get a full load of iron every 10 trips or so like iron bars or you might get like none <laughs> so excited to be at steel smithing. What was that? Was that at 30 smithing? And we're at, oh, 36. Really? Have we, was 30 steel smithing? Are we at 36 from 30? Me? Oh, I think I, I uh, yeah, I received several levels in the last episode when we uh, finished questing. I think we did the knight sword and got a, a significant amount of smithing XP. I think it may be what, maybe the reward is a straight number of smithing levels that might be the case so 36 that is not bad i'm actually happy with that mining 39 whoa that's gonna be we're gonna hit 40 we're gonna have a stat at 40 in 2001 scape okay okay that's pretty cool i can definitely dig that okay let's make swords. Let's get back into making swords. 
Um, I think, was I doing short swords for the money? I think I was. I think I was doing short swords. Yeah. I think I, I need to test this. I believe this ends up being more GP per bar. It takes longer to actually smith, right? Because you could get the smithing done in half the time. But compared to the whole journey of a trip, the time spent smithing a backpack, quote, quote, full of steel short swords is minimal. So not worried about saving a little bit of time to make less money when the goal right now is actually the, the money making part. Let's see how much uh, money that we make from this run if I just dump everything off and I don't and I choose not to wait for better short sword prices. Okay, steel short sword. Okay, about 1100 GP, maybe a little more than 1100, which is sweet. Okay, that, that feels like a lot of progress. Like each time you finish a trip and you sell, um, getting more than a K per trip is nice. Yeah, and I think what we were, that means we were probably saving up for 40K. Um, let's sell this here, 40K GP for the adamant plate body. I'll go back and watch my <laughs> clip where we went in and checked the price. And I'm actually right here, so I could, I could just go do that again. <laughs> yeah, why don't we go check that out a second time for fun? Cause I, I cannot remember, but I think we're aiding for 40K gold. And at the very least, even if you've already watched me do this in the, the same episode, at the very least you'll get to see me slide down the escape ladder again, which is probably the coolest function in all of 2001 Scape, so you're welcome um, for, for that exclusive footage. <laughs> in case you don't have a character with a blue cape already. All right, let's talk to Valaine. She runs the champion store. Hello there. Want to have a look at what we're selling today? Yes, please. Okay. Yep, 40, 40K and 40. 40K and 40. Yep, that's, that's kind of what I thought. And down the emergency escape ladder we go. How cool. All right, well, I think... Um, yeah, I think I'm going to call it... That's going to be it for today's episode. Thank you all so very much for watching. Um, if you like what you see, I don't even remember. Do I know my, my outro anymore? If you enjoyed the, the session, don't forget to hit the like button and to subscribe for more retro RuneScape content. I'm Twinrova. This is Theowen, and this has been a Let's Play 2001 Scape. Until we meet again, happy scaping and fight on. Okay, we're going to we're going to try that again, but this time with uh, with drama. Thank you so very much for watching. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit that like button and to subscribe. Okay, here we go. Take take 3. <laughs> here we go. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed Wow. Has he lost it? No, he hasn't lost it. Okay. I believe in me. I know you believe in me too. Here we go. <clears throat> All right, guys, I'm going to call it here. Thank you so much for watching. In today's session, we continued the grind towards 40K gold for the Adamant Plate Body, and in the next session, we will continue the grind. If you liked what you saw in this session, don't forget to hit that like button and to subscribe for more RuneScape content. I'm Twinrova. This has been Let's Play 2001 Scape. Until we meet again, happy scaping and fight on. Yeah, that was way better. Peace.